Now we're going to do some heart-focused breathing. So I'd like you to get as comfortable in your chair as you can, resting both feet on the floor. You might want to close your eyes, minimize distraction. And I'll ask you to focus on your heart, that physical place in your body where your heart resides. Slightly left of center. Some people find it helpful to place their hand on their heart. It's your choice. But get in touch with that physical location of your heart. Next, draw your attention to your breath. Feel your breath coming from that place, your heart. Notice your inhale. How deep is it? Let go of the exhale. How light is it? Now imagine, recall, the last time you felt great love and appreciation. Go to that heart feeling. Feel it fill your heart. Feel the love and appreciation fill your body. Allow it to grow. When you are ready, you can open your eyes. Just take a moment and look around the room. Another beautiful example of field intervention. This is a picture of the nervous system, our nervous system. I had a pointer, but I don't anymore. It doesn't matter. Here. Brain, and this is our nervous system. So the brain first came to my attention in the early 90s when my first beautiful young husband, at the age of 37, developed glioblastoma multiform, which is a form of brain cancer. So the brain got my attention. And if you know anything about that type of cancer, it is very aggressive, happens quickly. Ten months after diagnosis, he died. And at that time, I, I, I really was questioning why. Why did this happen? I wanted to understand. I wanted it to have purpose or meaning. The challenge with that, what I know now as a neuroscience acupuncturist, is the challenge with that, the challenge with that questioning why, trying to understand, kept me in that place of my 37-year-old husband just died. What I now know is it's about finding benefit in everything that occurs in your life. 
That is what allows me to stand here before you today. That would not be possible if that had not occurred. I could talk about the trajectory and give you examples of all of that, but the point is that everything that happens has a benefit. And when we find benefit, we change this. We change. You've heard the term, I'm sure, neurons that wire together, fire, fire together, wire together. Well, it's true. So if we can affect change in the brain, we can affect our whole entire nervous system. Everything that you think, every thought, and we have about 80,000 a day. I might have a little more, but. <laughs> every thought you think, every feeling you embrace, every behavior you demonstrate changes your brain, physiological changes in your brain. That's what we're going to talk about today. Electricity. Your body is electric. How is that? How is that possible? How, is it, how can I say everything runs on electricity, including me? We're going to talk about that. You're going to discover for yourself how you can change the nervous system. The nervous system governs everything. It governs hormones. It governs our moods. It governs our ability to be resilient. It governs everything. That's my story. And it is an honor and a privilege to really stand before you today and share with you my life's work. Elevated conversations, as Charles and uh, Rada said, Rade, Rade said, that we are going to have a series of elevated conversations here. And what do we mean by elevated conversations? We mean we want you to just expand your thinking. Let go of what you think you might know, let go of how it, it maybe it should be, and just let yourself experience something new. This is a great, I love this picture. Can you see it? Am I standing in your way there? So when we slice the cabbage, we slice it one way, it looks like that. We slice it the other way, it looks like this. So today is all about expanding new concepts, creating new creating new possibilities, a way of thinking that's different from the way that you think now. We're also talking about simple solutions, though. I'm going to explain some real complex things, and I'm going to break it down to simple solutions. So we're talking about the top of the pyramid, top-down learning, give you a concept, and then fill in what's below it. This is not about you remembering anything or memorizing anything. All the PowerPoints will be available to you on our website after next week. So you can go to our website and download. We also will have a resource page that lists all of the things that we're going to talk about today. So I just want you to relax, enjoy yourself, and open your mind. What are we going to discover? We're going to discover what bioelectricity is. And, but what I mean by that is, your body making electricity, the electricity your body makes. We're going to talk about field geometries, the building blocks of life, how everything is connected, and how everything has pattern, shape, spin, and form. We're going to talk about how healing is voltage, how having enough electricity in your body is how you stay healthy and strong. Review the idea of this whole notion that water has memory and what that means for us when we are 87% water. And we're going to teach you how to increase the electrical charge in your body and how to make molecular medicine. OK, so now we get into some of the science. So remember, I said, just, just let the concepts flow. Simple terms, simple terms. So this is an atom. Everything you see, everything that you are, you're made of, everybody's made, it's all atoms. Spinning outside the atom are electrons. Those are the electrons. Electrons are energy. Electrons are negatively charged particles that actually create energy in the body. So how do we do that? 
How does that happen? Who's heard of the word mitochondria? It's pretty popular now, almost everyone. The mitochondria are the work, the powerhouses of the body. They make the electricity and the energy for the body. How do they do that? Electrons. So electrons equal electricity, equal energy. So here is an image of, the, of a cell. Inside the cell, all those negatively charged particles, or those electrons, once they pass the cell membrane and go to the outside of the cell, which is positive, it becomes electricity. But how does the mitochondria actually do that? This is the coolest part. The mitochondria split the water molecule of your body to create more electrons, to create more electricity. You'll never find that simple in physics class. I mean, that, <laughs> it's taken me a long time to get that. So does everybody have that? Got that so far? You're all shaking your head at me, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> so electrons have a negative charge, as I said. You may have heard the word ATP. Right, ATP, adenotriphosphate. Adenotriphosphate is the biochemical that's made from the electricity that uses storage for energy of our cells. All the cells need energy. All the cells have electrons. The interesting part about our bodies is so we have electricity and we have biochemicals, chemicals that our body makes to do things, create white blood cells, create estrogen, the different things that our body has to do. What happens, though, is electricity controls all of that. Biochemicals are secondary. So I bang my, I bang my elbow, not funny, but I bang my elbow, and that sensation, I feel it here, but it's an electrical signal in my brain first. And then those chemicals are released to help me make it feel better. For a cell to function properly, it needs negative 25 millivolts. I need some water so you have some time to think about that. <laughs> so negative 25 millivolts just means how many electrons it needs. Don't get caught up in the number there. So, but what's important to know is that the cell needs that to function properly. So if that, ever, if that voltage ever falls down, that's when we get tissue degeneration and that's when we get things that start to break down. Okay, we got a basic idea, understanding of how the body makes electricity. Give me a nod. Yep, all right. How does the body use electricity? Every single thing that happens, raise your hand. Okay, put your hand down. Well, that was good. <laughs> so what happened? You heard me. Hairs in your ears, vibrating bones, sending a signal to your brain. Then your brain sending a signal to your muscle, right? Electrical, biochemical. All activity is electrical. In Western medicine, we use an EKG or EEG or ECG. Those are ways that we measure the magnetic field coming off of our heart and coming off of our brain. Heart is much greater. Heart, heart can be measured, now they're saying 30 feet. So your electrical magnetic field that you put out, that you are responsible for, is 30 feet and your brain is three. So think about that. And then we'll, of course, talk about where that comes from. As I said earlier, electricity tells those chemicals how to behave. This is really interesting. So all that energy that those mitochondria are making and that electricity that's passing around and all of that stuff we just talked about, your body has to make, well, has to make a lot. Let's just put it that way. Two-thirds of what it makes every day is used just for you to get up, go to work, 
maybe not go to work, bring breakfast, have your day. Two thirds of that, just for you to function like a, a normal average human being. So then that leaves us with one third. One third for us to do other things. I talk about resilience. So vi resilience is really not about how quickly we recover from something, but, it's, but it's, it's getting in front of the tiger before there's even a tiger there. It's, it's being able to get up with vitality and enjoy your day and create a sense of beauty in the world by just being present. So we only have one third to do that with. Don't be wasting it. Your body is extremely conductive. It's 87% water. And I think two thirds, I just saw this the other day, that's why I had to recall it. Two thirds of your body is made of water molecules. So there's also, we have this, we're, we're, this shell of water and then all of our molecules have all of this water. So there's all of this water. So we are electrical. Yes. Thank you. 87 rather than 78. OK. Thank you. Anytime, Charles. We share this journey together. Anytime. OK. Electron stealers and electron donors, right? Electrons, remember I said electrons make electricity. Electrons equal electricity. And then we have stealers and, don and donors. So let's, look at, let's talk about the stealers first. Who's heard of the term free radical? It's kind of popular too, right? So what actually is a free radical? So it's that little guy right in the middle there. What free radicals do is, and free radicals come from all sorts of different sources. I'll just name a couple, right? Pollution, pesticides, glyphosate, uh, stress, not sleeping well, not getting enough exercise, you get the picture, right? That, create, those cre that creates free radicals in the body. And all a free radical is, is it steals an electron from one of our healthy cells. That's what it does, because it, it needs one, so it steals one. So then what happens? You go to the doctor and your knee is bothering you, and it's swollen, and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you have arthritis. Okay, so what does that really mean? Well, your joint is inflamed. That's what if you took the word arthritis and broke it down, that's medical terminology, ortho joint inflammation. <clears throat> but what does that really mean? What it means is there's something in your knee, maybe bacteria, and there are free radicals there. And those free radicals are actually now damaging the tissue because they're taking electrons away from the tissue. So how do we heal the knee? We have to increase the electrical flow to the knee. Makes sense. So that's electron stealers. Then what about electron donors? So who's heard of the term antioxidants, right? Antioxidants, high dose vitamin C, sunshine, hugging your pet, hugging each other. That's electron donors. That actually creates and gives your body more electrons, more electrons, more energy. There we see another more chemical version of the free radicals and the antioxidants. This is really cool. Lightning. Lightning strikes the Earth in a second a hundred times. No. I do have a number. You said, well, I thought you were saying, I'm like, what, really? <laughs> I thought I got that right. I, I do. <laughs> I do sometimes transpose numbers, as you. I, we've, we've been, I know, we've been together for 23 years. It's true, 23 years. I still haven't got my numbers right. So this is the cool part. Lightning, when it strikes the Earth, it is putting electrons into the Earth. So when you go outside, and you walk barefoot, which we don't do much of anymore, you are sucking up electrons from the Earth.
I want to talk about grounding because we're going to do a live demonstration of grounding. So as I said, and you can go outside and you can be barefoot. That's grounding. You can suck up those electrons and maybe discharge some negative energy from all the EMFs and computers, and we won't go there right now. Um, so another way is to be on a grounding mat. So I want to tell you a little bit about the gentleman who in invented the technology, because I find his story fascinating. Uh, I don't remember his name. I guess that's irrelevant. Our, anyway, thank you. That's irrelevant. He was a cable man. He would go around and lay cable, and he would ground everything. That was his job. He would climb up poles and ground houses and businesses. And he got really sick, and they didn't know what was wrong with him. You have inflammation, chronic inflammation, in a lot of pain, suffering. And he started to observe, everybody wears sneakers. Who wears leather bottom shoes anymore? Leather, you could absorb the electrons, but not with rubber. Everybody wears sneakers or something like that, rubber soles. That is insulating us from the earth. So he thought to himself, what about if I ground myself? You know, this, the simplest answer is always the correct answer. So he took some, he took a wire, put it in the ground, a rod, put it in the ground, connected it to wire, and then put magnetic tape around a bed and laid in his bed. And normally he could lay there, not really, for 10 minutes. He slept through the night. And when, that occur and when he woke up, he had no pain. So when that occurred with, for him, he decided that he needed to, to get out there and spread this word. So he is the person who invented this concept of grounding and presenting it as a way to increase electricity in the body. That's really what we're talking about. Increase circulation, bring more health to the cells. Do you want to add anything before I, we do the demonstration? I think, uh, I think what uh, Teresa is saying is just, it's really an amazing concept for all of us, is that we're an electrical being, and lightning discharges electrons into the planet, and when we make contact with the earth, with skin, or we use one of these devices, is that discharges uh, dissident electricity, and it uptakes electrons. And we have a demonstration for you. We had. Uh, ah. Yeah. So we have uh, we had a demonstration all laid out, and we uh, one of our dear colleagues was going to come and do some uh, work with us this morning, and his mother died at like six o'clock. So Teresa and I are um, ad living in this particular moment, but we've asked our friend Lonnie to come join us. And I'm going to set up the experiment and demonstration for you. Okay. Can we just, can we, can we just take a moment? Of, can we just take a moment of time? Please, please. Can we just have a moment of silence for David and his mom and his family? Thank you. Thank you. This is unrehearsed, and I'm thinking as I'm standing in front of you. But what I want to uh, demonstrate is that Teresa is going to be holding a voltmeter. And I'm going to turn the voltmeter on. And Lonnie is going to come. And this how we're going to do this. Um, why, don't, why don't we do this? You face, you face the room. And Lonnie's going to read a number. And as Teresa comes in contact with electromagnetic fields, the number theoretically will change. And when she grounds herself, then we should see a change. But to give evidence, then we're not, Lonnie is not going to see what we're doing in the back. He's only going to be looking at the meter, but you'll be able to see us, right? So, so right now, where Teresa's standing, Lonnie, the, the, re the reading is what? 0.11. OK. And then what happens now? Uh, 0.22. All right. 
All right, so what has happened is Teresa came in close proximity to the field, right, from the monitor, it jumped. And any, anything, over, anything over one is disease causing, okay? And so Teresa then touched the monitor in the same way that we would touch our computers or other devices in our house. And Lonnie, what, uh, what was the number? 0.52. Okay, now I'm going to... And in a particular moment, I'm going to touch this to Teresa, and Lonnie's not going to see that. And Lonnie, you tell us whenever there is a change in the voltage. Okay. There, thank you very much. Right. That's cool. Right. Thank you. So you've gone from, um, you've gone from uh, uh, um, basically disease forming electromagnetic field to grounding that out of the body, but at the same time that that is occurring, it's also uptaking electrons. And that's a good example of an electron donor. And uh, we don't, we're going to tell you about two uh, pieces of technology. We don't sell any of this technology. Our, our friend that comes here, he's a distributor, but we can leave information out for you and uh, that you can contact him if you're interested. And I think then, what happens next? Oh, that's David and that's the ground. And so here are the grounding pads. And we've been using them for years in our office we, when our patients come in. One of the first things we do is we, we try to get, get you in contact with that. And the reason for that is because what happens is when you hear the words, when you hear the words um, inflammation and oxidation, that means that um, there are free radicals. And the free radicals are robbing electrons from the healthy tissue. So when you hear the word anti-inflammation and anti-oxidation, it just simply means that there are more electrons being added into it. And one of the reasons that vitamin C is a monster antioxidant is because it just generates electrons. It's an electron donor. So when we go and we start thinking in these electrical systems, everything gets really, really simple. We don't have to be biochemists. We just have to understand some basic electrical principles to be able to rehabilitate the central nervous system and then effectively treat any condition. And that is just the time that we live in right now in the world, and it's very, very exciting. What's next? So we broke, I tried to break down the understanding of how electricity is made Excuse in the body down. about mitochondria. <laughs> I, I am the field adjuster. That's a good new I, name. You know, I, this is a really good point. I just want to. We're, I want to. I'm kind of take this and go with it, right? So in uh, in in Chinese medicine, right, which is our background, we're we're classical. So in Chinese medicine, there is it, 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 units of a like kind have a direct opposite: hot, cold, up, down, man, woman, fire, water, and those those are, those units are classified in. Uh, a yin and yang, uh, that's all it means. It's, it's a classification of certain properties, right? So the saying is that yin creates yang and yang activates yin, or woman gives birth to man, but man activates woman. And it just goes on, these principles, right? So what's really cool is that, um, and the saying is that, that in fetal development, the organs the organs create a field of energy. And the field of energy tells the organs what to do. So yin creates yang, and yang directs yin. So in the body electric, yin, <laughs> yin are the hormones. But the electrical system is the yang, and the yang is telling the hormones how to behave. So it's these ancient systems had this stuff. And now, with functional MRIs and just the world that we live in, we now have a greater understanding of that. So I am very young. I am, uh, those of you that know, know these principles know that I am that. And Teresa's power is she's the yielding yin. And so thank you. That's why you'll keep seeing us adjust each other. I'm drinking 
I'm drinking chia seeds, which is we're going to go over in the next hour, and they get stuck in my teeth, in my mouth, so Teresa will be continually <laughs> wiping me off, and I'll be continually <laughs> speaking to suggesting her thing. All right. Field intervention. Everybody have an understanding of that, right? That we experience that with the heart. We experience that getting to know each other. Mitochondria releasing electrons to create electricity. You have to keep turning your mic down. Yeah. Body uses electricity for all things, physical, non-physical, conscious, unconscious. Insulation, shoes, sneakers, prevents the uptake of electrons from the earth. A solution is to be barefoot or get a grounding mat. Healing equals voltage. You are all electron donors. Now you get to take a break. So how, how long? Uh, we'll ring the bell. Ten minutes. And so does everyone know where there's, there's water? And uh, yeah, let me tell you about the, the water real quick so we can get you, get you going with that. Am I on? You're on. So in the, in the back of the room, there is a five-gallon water container, and that water has uh, it's been uh, doctored and changed and structured in the way that we're going to talk about. And then right next to it uh, is a little container of chia seeds, and what happens is chia seed increases voltage in water. And I'm going to go over all of that with you in a few moments. So if you want to start taking advantage of the water, please, there's two restrooms. Uh, we're very sensitive about time, your time, and, and just come back as soon as you can. Thank you. <laughs>